for tick war T right T is equal to T tick right so for tick war this is equal to what T tick and this is equal to your what T tick depending on the section they're looking at for this case this is your T tick and for this case this is your T what T tick yes or no does that make sense anyone any questions please Okay. No question. We okay? Okay. And then the other the other thing that is different, okay, the other thing that is different is if you want to find the stresses at over here, this is my point alpha. Oh, this is not very good. Too much too many things. I'm going to draw in a different. So if you want to find your stresses over here, this is equal to your stress at alpha, right? The area you have to consider is this entire area for box beam. Okay? Your first moment of area you have to consider. However, if you want to find over here, if this is our point, if this is our point alpha, right, for a white flange, the area you have to consider is only here. You can see the difference, right? So why is that? Because over here, to find the area alpha, the entire region, the originator of the stresses is at the center. So the, the shear stress will go to left and will go to right. That's why you have to take the entire what? Area. Whereas over here, to look for alpha, Right, the start is on your right hand side where I'm drawing the dot now, and alpha is over here. You only need to consider the area, you don't need to consider the area on the left hand side. Okay, so these are a new set of rules now. Okay, now this is for thin walls. So, on top of the rules that I've given you all earlier, now we have extra. Okay, so we classified them into two box beam and what white flange. Okay, too much talking now. Now let's look at an example. I think for this case, by looking at an example, you will understand better. Okay, by looking at an example. So you, you can see the difference now, yes or no? You can, you can see the difference between thick wall and thin wall. Now some of you will say, Eugene, uh, when is it a thin wall, when is it a thick wall? It's by observation or the question will tell you to use thin wall analysis. As an engineer, if you are not sure, okay, you have to specify. I'm going to assume it to be a thin wall analysis or I'm assuming it as a thick wall analysis. You have to state the assumption. Okay. Is now, is yes. there a, is there a, like a safe assumption? Like if you assume, like if you don't, if you don't know, if you assume it's just thick wall, is that better? Or like, a, you uh, no, you can't. If let's say the wall is like three millimeters and okay. then, right. So you, you have to, you, you, you have to, I, so far, based on how I do analysis as a consultant, I will, I will check, okay? There's no fixed ratio for it, unfortunately. I will check if I do a thin one analysis, what will happen first, okay? Because thin one analysis, the stresses are usually higher when compared to thick wall. Why is that? Because the, the T is small, yes or no, right? The T is small on the flange over here. Where else if I use white, the T is thick down here. Again, first I have to look at the thickness of the wall. Then I'll do a check. Okay. By looking at the stress uh, value that I calculate. Okay. Then I'll, we will make the appropriate uh, uh, decision. But for your case, you are learning for now. It's not, it's not critical. Okay. I will tell you which one to use. I think that's more important. Right. So let's do one example okay let's do one example i i like this example now what's going to happen is i'm going to lecture to 12 20 
Okay, you take your time to do the quiz. Okay, you have until three o'clock. Okay, are, are we okay? Are we agree to this or no? We okay? Someone say okay or you can highly protest. Okay, no protest. You ask me, Eugene, how am I going to protest? <laughs> are we okay? Yeah, we're good. Okay, we are good. Okay, so let's look at let's look at one very controversy example. Okay, example number four. So let's look at ah this one, my favorite. Always very confusing. Okay. So we're gonna look at this section. All right, I said I warned you guys before, right? This topic only two formulas. But the analysis is going to drive you bananas, okay? And I like this example because it is, you have to really, really analyze. Okay. So this example, knowing that a given vertical shear V cause a maximum shear stress of 10 KSI in a head shape extrusion. Okay. So we are asked to uh, determine the corresponding shear stresses at point A and at point B. Okay, so you see point A and at point B. Question. Is this structure uh, box beam or white flange? Anyone? How many of, say, of you will say it's a box beam? How many of you will say a white flange? And how many of you don't give a shit now? <laughs> Anyone? You guys are still thinking. The answer is both. Okay. The answer this one is both, right? So given that tau max is equal to 10 times 10 to about 3 psi. So because of the structure, okay? The centroid is again at the center. So this is the centroid, exactly at the center, right? So this is the centroid. You have a vertical shear force coming down, Vy, right? So at the top, if, if if we are to uh, not see the bottom, okay, if I, I, I'm 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 going to I'm going to do this, okay? I'm I'm going to I'm going to copy. And I'm going to paste. Right. This is one question that a lot of a lot of people hate, but listen to me, you will love it. Right, things that you hate, I'll make sure you love. Things that you love, I make sure. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. Not things that you love, make sure you have. I'm not a sadist. Okay, so if we cover the bottom, right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to draw a box. We cover the bottom. Okay, yeah, we don't, we don't see the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to call it. Uh, can I fill this thing up? No, there's nothing to fill it up. I thought I can fill this up. Mm. Sorry, people. I thought I could. Can any does anyone know how to fill the box on notes? Ink, stupid software. Or some of you will say, yeah, the user is dumb. Okay, I'll, I'll, give me a give me a second. Okay, I'm I'm going to do something. Uh, give me a second. Don't run away. Don't run away. I'm going to get a. 
I'm going to get a get a few box from another software. Yeah, I know there's another software that I could fill a box up. It's so ridiculous that I can't do it there. I think I got it. Okay. So if I were to go. Okay, you guys can still see, right? So I'm going to paste. Okay, so this is my box. So if I'm going to cover the uh, bottom. All right, I don't need to see the bottom. All right. Right, so I covered below the centroid. Now this this structure is a what? Box beam, right? You ask me, Eugene. So what if it's uh, so what if it's a, a a box beam, right? You say so what if it's a box beam? So when there's a case, when you construct your queue, right? When you construct your queue. Your key will do this. One will go to the left hand side, one will go to the right hand side. Okay. And then if I'm going to uh, construct, so, so if I cover the bottom, it's a box beam. Again, where we're going to analyze, we're going to start analyzing from the where. The datum is uh, the, the the datum is at the centroid. We're going to analyze analysis. will start from y max. Okay. Now, if we want to go for the other one, the one on the right. If we're going to analyze it over here now, I'm going to cover the top. Right. This is covering the top. Now this looks like what? Right. This look look like a white what? Okay, this look like a white flange. And a white flange, your Q will do this. The left section and the right section are not related at all. Yes or no? They, they don't have a common starting point. One starts from here, the other one starts from here. Okay. So, so how about do we calculate the stresses at point B? Okay. So we are going to calculate the stresses at point B first. Okay. So we are going to calculate uh, stresses. Okay. We are going to calculate the stress. Let me reduce. So we are going to calculate. Or we are going to calculate the shear force. The shear at point B. Okay. So we're going to apply uh, thin wall analysis. So we know that shear at point B is equal to VQ over IT. Ah, now things get interesting. Yes. Right? Why, why, why do I say uh, uh, things get interesting now? Right? So V and I are what? Are constant. Right? Now T, for this case, can anyone tell me why is our thickness now? Anyone? Thin. Yeah, so it's equal to 0 0.2 inch. Yes or no? Yeah. Right, it's not equal to uh, 2 inches anymore, right? Because it's thin wall analysis, right? So the next thing we want to find is the Q at point B, right? So the Q at point B now, because of how your arrow is, your shear flow is distributed, you have to take this whole section now. Okay, you have to take the whole section now. Okay, so I like to do width, right? So if you look over there, you have two inch minus by each wall thickness of the web, 0 0.3 minus 0 0.3. So this is the width. The depth is equal to 0 0.2, 
right? The depth is equal to 0 0.2. The whole thing is 3 inches. 3 divided by 2 minus by 0 0.2 divided by 2. Okay, so this is your width. This is your depth. This is your y bar. Okay, so why 3 divided by 2? The whole thing is 3 inches divided by 2. This is 0 0.2 divided by 2. So this will be equal to uh, 2 minus 0.3 minus 0.3 minus 0.3 times by